that when it's hot, water evaporates, it, it, and then it's, it rains, and then the rain comes down and feeds rivers, and then the rivers feed the ocean, and then water rises, evaporates again, and that cycle continues. So this awareness was because of their relationship to nature. Stunning, stunning landscapes and these. Caves, coastline. And so they've always built their buildings respecting nature in ways in which they can have amazing views of nature. So I'm showing you the churches of Santorini, which is one of the well-known islands. Um, but no matter where you go, nature and man, through architecture, has always had a relationship. These are the, the beautiful churches on Santorini Island. Is it Santorini? Yes, that was Santorini. That's Santorini. So the whitewashed walls and the blue domes are, and then you have stunning sunsets off there. Mm -hmm. So if you have such a presence of water all around you, you're bound to uh, look at it, think about it, appreciate it, yes, in a visual way, but then you end up with somebody inevitably who will think about it in deeper terms. So here we have Thales. Thales, who is the first philosopher um, in Greek history, and he came up with the notion, he, his philosophy is that all is water. So he is the first scientist, we call him a scientist, because he tried to explain the earth in terms of water. Now what is the difference? So here, we're talking about the contributions of ancient Greek, the, the ancient Greeks and how their appreciation of nature led them to give mankind, all of these things. So before